Good morning. So I'm Bruce Morrison. I'm a teaching artist with Meadho Arts Alliance here in their studio at, uh, in Twisp, Washington. And today, the art, our art lesson is drawing an owl. And uh, owls are one of my favorite birds. I'm also going to, I am going to offer some Spanish uh, language as well as English today. So, buenos dias, clase. Vamos a dibujar el bujo. Uh, o tecolote, si quieres. Okay, um, so we're going to draw this owl, and I'm probably going to draw uh, a bird called a great horned owl. It's the, one of the biggest owls that we have around here, and it's the one with the pointy ears. And at night, sometimes you can hear it going, hoo hoo, hoo hoo, hoo hoo. Okay, so in drawing an owl, first um, we want to talk a little bit about the bird itself. And as you know, owls hunt at night. They're adapted to hunt at night. And so the owl uh, has big eyes. It has very, very uh, good ears. And so it's able to both hear and see things we cannot see and like mice hiding in the grass or under the snow even. As, as they hunt, they often um, do that hooting sound. Hoo -hoo, hoo -hoo. And sometimes they screech, and I'm not gonna screech like an owl, but it, the screeching makes the, the mice afraid, and so the mice run, so that, and then when they run, they make noise and the owl can see them. Owls have special feet, they have two toes in front and two behind, and that one of the toes can switch around like this to catch the mice. Um, okay, well, let's get busy uh, drawing the owl. Vamos a empezar dibujar el bujo. Okay, so when we draw this owl, we're gonna use our crayons, and I'm just using four colors, okay? I'm using the black, an orange, a brown, and a yellow. And those four colors should do it. So we're going to start with those. I also have my watercolor set ready for later. Not, we won't start with that, but we will finish with it. Watercolors are really good to create the nighttime, uh, to paint the darkness behind the owl, as well as to um, give color to the feathers. So um, let's get busy drawing. Uh, let's draw this owl, the el bujo, uh, buo. So for the beginning, um, I'm going to draw this owl looking straight at us. We could look, we could do different ways, and I'm going to draw him standing on a perch instead of flying. I might try some uh, pictures of him flying later, but so the. Uh, the beginning of the owl is going to be a V, and it's got a little curve to the V, and it kind of meets in the middle, almost meets in the middle. And in the middle, and those are its eyebrows, by the way, and in the middle there's going to be a beak, okay? And the owls don't have a very big beak. I might color that orange just because put a little orange with it. And his eyes, okay, of course the eyes are the most important part of any animal. The eyes are kind of tucked up underneath the eyebrows. And so I'm going to make them, I'm going to start them as little stars, like this, okay. Instead of drawing a circle first, I'm going to draw them as little stars that are kind of hiding underneath the eyebrows, like that. Little, And I'm using gold because they are kind of golden. And then around the outside they have a little layer of darker color. Darker, darker, darker. 
And then around that, they have kind of the eye, the eyelid, maybe, that we, we're going to draw is just black. So there are the eyes of the owl. And we're going to go around these with layer after layer of feathers. And uh, if you look at a picture of an owl, you can see that their, their feathers are in circles, rings around their eyes like this. And the feathers both are in rings, one after another. That's called concentric. That means having the same center and circles around that center. And the other thing they do is radiate like the sun, like this, or like a star. Both things are going on in the bird's feathers. They're both arranged in rings and they radiate out like stars. So I'm going to start with um, some yellow feathers again, okay, around their eyes. See how I make them like, like the rays of the sun coming out like this. Hoo -hoo. And owls, their eyes can see things in the dark because they, <clears throat> I'm going to draw in the middle, they have the ability to capture light. I'm going to put some black lines in here too to show that, that part there. And then around it, there's another layer of, fe layer of feathers. They go out like this. I'm going to use some brown around the beak to show that it's kind of got some shadow to it. There's some darkness. I'm going to intensify these eyebrows now. Maybe even make them like this. I'm going to add some texture to it. The texture of those feathers. And then do the same thing on the other side. That's called symmetry. When, when the two eyes match each other side to side, they're symmetrical. It's another word. Maybe now some black. And you don't have to do it in just the same way I did. You can use other colors if you want. I'm going to add some black around the beak to intensify that. So when we're drawing, we're constantly both filling it out and intensifying it. So we can always go back over and add, like, I think I'll add some more blackness right under the eyebrow to show that it's deep and shadowy in there around the eye. I'm going to also intensify the darkness around the eye to make it even more powerful looking out at you. And let's talk about how we're going to do the feathers on the forehead too. Everything, all the feathers in the owl's face kind of start right above the beak and then radiate out. So we're going to, I'm going to use, instead of just lines, I'm going to do a, a little thing like this, little little V strokes that are going to make feathers. And some more. See how I let a little of the, the paper show through inside the V's? That's to give it some contrast. And that'll come in handy when we go to paint. So everything comes out from that center point. And I'm doing this jiggy jaggy stroke, kind of like little brown lightning. And there's a certain time we'll stop and say, okay, that's enough. Maybe that's enough. Now I'd like to get those ears and the ears aren't ears like, like we know, but they're feathers. And I'm going to put one up here like this and another one over here like this. They're kind of crooked, you know, but that's okay. They move around. You know, the owls point their ears at whatever they're listening to. 
It's their way of capturing the sound. So maybe the way the easier is it looks like he's listening to something over here. So then he has the feathers on his chest as well. The owl's breast down here. And I'm going to do more jiggy jaggy strokes. And the, the owl has kind of spotted, you know, it might have some black in it, some black marks. And we don't have to be too careful about this because the feathers are kind of rumpled up. I'm going to call that good for now. And I'm going to put his wings on there now. So his wings are folded at his side. So we start with his shoulders up here and over here, the shoulders of his wings. And his feathers are kind of loopy things that hang down like this. On one side, they loop down. And on the other, they kind of loop down. And they over, if you start at the top and go down, it'll show it, they're kind of like shingles. They hang down one over the other, all the way down the body. The word for wings in Spanish is las alas. And the word for feathers in Spanish is las flechas. Okay, so we got wings. I might even do some little detail on the feathers, the way that the inside the feathers, there are little marks like little pine trees that show how the, um, the feathers are made. Gives some more texture to the bird. And we don't have to get each one just perfect, but you get the idea. We're trying to give it a little bit more of a sense. Instead of just lines on paper, it starts to look like a real bird's real feathers. Notice how I don't have to put the, the lines on both sides of the feathers. Just one is enough, and then the other side looks like maybe it's catching some light. Okay, he goes down and then I'm going to jump right down to his feet because owls have big furry feet and they have, they have four claws and sometimes two are in front and sometimes three are in front. I'll draw three on each side. And instead of just drawing them as lines, I'm going to draw them as little clumps of feathers. Three of them there and then three of them over here. Notice how I'm using those feathers to draw with. Instead of just drawing a line, I'm building them out of the feathers. So there's actually three on each side. And then their talons, the claws on an owl are called talons. And these are what they use to grab things with. An owl has powerful talons. I'm going to draw those with black, color them with yellow. Okay, then I'm going to add, just to make it more interesting, I'm going to add some highlights with my yellow crayon to my brown feathers to make them a little more shiny and interesting. Maybe down here. And it's good to let your, when you're drawing feathers or fur on an animal, it's good to let yourself be a little bit sloppy about it. Don't try and get everything just right because the fur and, and the feathers on a bird aren't in any special pattern. Well, they, they are, but, but there's a lot, uh, a lot of change in the way the bird moves, the way the light is, and if we, use uh, different colors, sometimes darker and sometimes lighter, we can show that movement and the way that the light and everything changes. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that, okay? I think I'm done drawing now and we'll switch to the painting. So before we get started painting, I'm going to set the crayons over here and you can always come back and get them. 
but I'm going to move over and get my watercolors ready. Make sure you have a dish of clean water, your watercolor set, and your brush. While I work on um, getting ready, why don't you get ready too? And we'll join our, I'll join you with the watercolors. Okay, with the watercolor, the first thing I do is dip the brush in the water to make sure that it has a chance to drink up some water and get ready, get listo para pintar. And notice that every time I touch the water, there's a little extra drop on there and I touch the rim to let that extra drop fall off so it's, uh, it doesn't flood my watercolor set. This is a watercolor set that many kids have used before. So you can see it's not all clean, it's, it's been used, which is a good thing. And first of all, a little vocabulary. This, the brush, is the artist's main tool and it needs to be um, treated carefully. Never push it, never, uh, never, ne especially never scrub down on it. The ends of this brush are actually, is actually made out of animal fur and it's a delicate thing and you, you want to see how it's got a little point on it. That's how a brush should be. It should be pointed up like that with just the right amount of water. The word in Spanish for this is uh, el pincel, pincel. It, it's not brocha. Brocha is the kind of brush that you paint a house with. El pincel and the word for watercolors in Spanish is las acuarelas. Okay, if we're ready to paint, I'm going to dip the brush in the water and let the last little drop, la ultima gotita, uh, fall back in. And now I've got the brush pointed up, ready to paint. So I'll start with the brown because owls are brown. Now that I know that. And I gently paint around the top of the little, these are called pans, the pan of the paint and let my brush fill up with paint. So I've got plenty. And I'll start, where shall I start? I guess I'll start right above the beak. I don't want to paint the beak brown, but I do want to paint the feathers brown. So I'll paint right over my, uh, my water, my uh, crayons and let the crayons come through. And they'll actually push away that paint that I'm putting on there. And I can pull off the extra paint to let the, um, the marks I made before show through more and more. I'll paint down on both sides of the beak, bring it right down close to the eyes and maybe make the head a little more rounded than I did the first time. Notice I'm trying to pull the brush, not push it. I'll make the ears, maybe even leave a little white showing underneath the ears. About like that. How about like that? Okay, that's enough for the top of the owl. Now I'll dip the brush again, get some more more water, let it fill up again, and then I'll come down and let's paint down here on the chest. And this time I'm going to do something different. I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to paint feathers instead of painting all one. I'm, watch how I use the brush to make feathers. I use the shape of the brush to create the texture and form of the feathers. Let's do that some more with some more brown next layer and I'm going doing layer after layer from the top moving down all the way across the owl's belly. And again, it's good if it's a little bit messy. Don't try and make this perfect. Animals fur and feathers gets messy. So yours can too. A little more. All the way across. And down at his feet, I'll point the feathers down towards his feet a little bit. Paint his toes. 
the feathery toes. And I'm, I'm trying to leave a little bit of the white to show through. And that, that gives it a little brightness. I'm going to go around his face, the sides of his face, her face. Notice how I, I didn't go over this inner part here because I want to create some contrast between the outside of the face and the inside of it. And there's places, if I've got too much paint there, I'm going to wait until my brush is a little thirsty and then I'll come back and pull some paint away from there. Now that I've used up some of that paint over here, I can pull some of this extra paint here. Kind of suck it up. That's pretty good. Notice how I'm letting this be raggedy. I'm not trying to get it all perfect, okay? I'm making him a little chunkier. So he's got, he, owls aren't skinny, they're chunky. Okay, and then I'm ready for the wings. A lot of this painting is with this brown. Whoops, drop, drop, drop. And so I'm, I, see I've got these drops here and I'll use those to make those feathers. Notice how I'm skipping over and leaving a little bit of white in between. Kind of playing, letting the, letting the, the uh, paint have a life. Notice how, how the, the yellow, when I paint over the yellow, it, it will come right through. It'll push the, the watercolor away. I've got a little goober up here. I'll make that part of the wing and leave it a little bit ragged. If you, if you go too far, you can just make that part of the wing, part of the feather shape too. I've got a little puddle in here. I can pull that back. Get a little more brown to do the other side. Oops. I won't be able to fix that. I'll just leave that. Yeah. There's also a thing where you don't want to, f you want to leave your, your painting looking a little bit unfinished, a little raw, because that's what lets the life in. Okay, I need to paint the, uh, the bird's toes. I'm going to leave the talons like they are. I'm going to touch up this ear. Now's a good time to look over your bird and decide what you'd like to change. If there's anything that you'd need to balance out, you can add some more. You can even take some away. One way to, to take it away, I'll put the, my, the tip of my brush on my cup, put my finger on my brush and pull, oops, I pulled the handle right off of this brush. Pull the paint out of it and then it's thirsty. So when it's thirsty, it'll pull up my extra paint. I'm going to get rid of a little more of that. This time I'm making sure I don't pull the top off it. Maybe a little bit off of here and off of here. Okay, good enough. <laughs> okay, it's a weak brush. Now, now that we've got the owl painted, the next thing we'll do is to paint the sky, the night sky behind it. But let's let this dry a little bit. It'd be good to take a break now, let your owl dry a little bit, and we'll come back and paint the night sky. Okay, let's uh, real quickly paint some night sky. All I'm going to do is paint some little stars up here with my yellow so they can show through. And maybe a moon. Let's put a moon up here too. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is go around my owl real quick with my yellow just to keep the, because the yellow will keep the, the, the dark color from coming over the owl. It makes a little protective package for my painting because 
and it also intensifies it. See how it brought it to life? Okay, I'll quickly get some, I'm gonna paint uh, using, uh, I'm gonna paint with purple, because I like purple. Even though skies aren't often purple, it's a nice color. And I'm gonna paint right over my, my sky. I'm gonna keep it out of the center of the moon. And I'm gonna let it be a little bit blotchy. Let a little bit of the white show through because you know there's clouds that come around. The sky is many different colors. I'm gonna paint right over those stars and look how the, the, uh, the yellow crayon comes right through that purple sky. Okay, I'm gonna blend in this little brown I spilled here. One last little purple down below and we're good. All right, your owl is ready for his nighttime sky. Thanks for painting with me. Uh, congratulations, artists, artistas. Uh, we've painted our owl, and uh, I look forward to painting again with you next time. I hope your owl can, you know, be careful. It might come to life in the dark of night. <laughs>